Welcome back folks. Today we're going to continue on with our testing of this Fernisi 2C53T and we're going to today look at the uh, multimeter and the function generator. So let's go over to the multimeter there and pop right in. It's got a completely automatic mode and it's got of course your standard modes as well. It's, it's also auto ranging in all those modes. Let's see what it can do here with these resistors and resistance is one of those things that can be done in the auto mode. So you got resistance and voltage can be done in the auto mode. Everything else needs to be switched to that particular mode. Well, let's get started here. So we'll see if this... All right. So the reason it's beeping is because it's below 50 ohms. So it's assuming that this may be a continuity test. But it's coming up at 1.18. What does it come up with for the leads themselves? 0.15. So then it's on the resistance there, it's right on. That's good. Let's bring it up to 100 ohms. It's very fast. It's faster than some of the traditional meters that I have around here. That's pretty good. I also like it's a four and a half digit meter, so that's pretty nice as well. Okay, let's go up to the next one here. And that's pretty good. That's pretty good too. That is right on there. No problem with the accuracy of the ohms mode. Let's go over here and try capacitance now. So we have to select that manually, but it should auto range once it's in this mode. I still haven't gotten around to fixing my 23 picofarad capacitor. <laughs> I must do that someday. So let's try it on the 540 picofarad. Okay, it's measuring that a little bit low. You know, measuring capacitance, it's not an easy thing. Depending on the method you use, you can be off a little bit here and there. So this looks like it's off by a little bit less than 10% on that one. It's quite off on that one. Doing pretty good on this one. It's okay on there. And 430 UF. Oh wow, that was fast for 430 UF. It could be a little bit better in this range here. This capacitor may have drifted on me, I don't know. Let's see what it says about this capacitor. Yeah, okay, it's agreeing with this pretty closely. So maybe that capacitor has drifted on me. I should, uh, I should replace that. So yeah, it's, it's doing fine. All right, we've got it in diode check mode. 0.26 versus 0.25, very good. 0.62. Okay, now let's see what voltage it's putting out to test. Oh, four volts, that's great. That's a good voltage to testing diodes. All well, these auto meters, they don't detect very low voltages very well. It's usually around about a volt or so before they kick in and be able to do it. So we're going to try this here at 0.545 thereabouts coming out of the power supply. And yeah, see, so it, it's coming up and detecting it as a resistance. Well, let's see at what point it uh, changes its mind. So let's go up to the points, that's 0.75 there. No, it doesn't know what to make of that either. 0.85. Okay, it's good at that. Let's bring that voltage down just a little bit. Okay, 0.8 volts and above, you're, you're gonna be okay. And that's fairly typical of these uh, automatic modes on these meters. Okay, let's compare it directly with the Bryman to see what they both say. I know the Bryman is really accurate. So let's, uh, let's bring up the voltage a little bit here. Say 1.8 volts, 2.8 volts. Okay, so we've got 30 volts. Should be about 60 volts. Very, very close match there. No problem as a voltmeter. And uh, let's try some current. So let me set up for that and I'll be right back. All right, so here we have uh, set up to measure some small currents here. So we're in the milliamp range and we're down to 0 0.014 milliamps or 14 microamps. This one's measuring it a little bit higher and bouncing around just a little bit. Let's bring that up to about 10 times that. Okay, a bit more than 10 times. So yeah, now they're in perfect agreement. Let's see where they go out of agreement. But once we get up here, we're fine. Let's bring it up around about here. Good, that's more current in there. We're still good. Step by step, still in good agreement. Still in good agreement. So we have to switch up to the amps range now. Okay, we're in agreement there. 300 milliamps. 
There's around half an amp right there. Very good agreement. Let's bring it up to an amp and a half. They're measuring things fine. Let's try some uh, AC voltages, see what it does with that. So just in case some of you are wondering whether or not these, uh, the spacing here is, is correct, it's not. So they've got it at about 17 millimeters, not 19. So we'll have to bring the input from the function generator in through the Bryman here. Because it is standard. 50 millivolts RMS, supposedly, coming out of the signal generator. And we're getting 49.37 here, 48.8 there. That's pretty good. Well, let's, let's step it up a little bit here. All right, so we've got 199 on the signal generator. We've got 197.7 here, 196.8 there. Showing a little difference between them. I don't know which one's more accurate at this point. But anyway, we bring it up now to, uh, let's say, 1.5 volts. And we've got an uh, agreement again, so there's no problem there. They're doing fine. Okay, let's uh, plug it into the mains and see if we can get agreement there. Yeah, pretty close. Okay, good. Everything's doing really good so far. I'm going to leave it at that for the DMM portion of it. And I'm going to move on now to the function generator. So we'll get this out of here. All right, folks, we're back here with the function generator part of it. And you should see an oscilloscope up there. We're putting into it right now. It says we're putting into it a 1 hertz signal, <clears throat> but it's coming out at 2.2 hertz or thereabouts. Now, if I go up here to 2 hertz, it doesn't change much. So I guess the lowest frequency, the way it it is right now, the lowest frequency I can get out of this is going to be about 2 hertz. And if we go up from there, we got to 3 hertz, 4 hertz. Now, I'd like you to take a look at that, uh, that signal there. It, it's, it's got an awful lot of steps in it. So let's have a look at that a little bit closer. Let's bring the trigger point down about here. And let's expand that screen out a little bit. What you see there is the, the stair step effect of a, probably a R2R ladder type of a digital to analog converter. And they haven't done much filtering on it. My guess is that the, this wouldn't be a great function generator for audio because you've got that, that much higher frequency in the background there. If you're doing any sort of a distortion analysis or frequency response analysis, that's going to really affect your results. Let's bring the frequency up. We should have 100 hertz coming up here now, and we do. Also, like if you look at the bottom of that wave, there's a little bit of um, distortion. This is also caused by uh, the direct digital synthesis. Their, their table in there is either incomplete or they're not looping through all the values in the table. They're going to be skipping a few values there near the bottom. That's one possibility of what they could do. So they may be able to fix all this in firmware. I know they're going to be looking at this, so I hope that uh, maybe they take that opportunity. Let's bring it up to a kilohertz, or 1.1 kilohertz anyway, and see how it looks like there. All right, we still have that distortion at the bottom of the wave, and we still have the stair step effect. So I don't think that's going to go away. Now let's bring it up. I think the maximum on this is 50 kilohertz, so let's bring it up to 50 kilohertz here. See what it looks like. Yeah, you can see down that, that that distortion down at the bottom there is a little bit more pronounced, and you can see it's it's at the rising edge of the waveform right there. So it looks like what they're 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 coming down there. They're counting sine values until about here, then for some reason they're not updating the value that, that much over this, and then they're updating it where it should be. So they should have come up smoothly to this point here, but they should be able to fix that in firmware. So let's get uh, out of this one, go down to the voltage. So we're at one volt peak to peak, and that's what's giving us. So it's very accurate in the, in the voltage category. Let's go in here and let's bring it up to 1.5. The scope is reading is 1.52, so that's good. Let's bring it up. I think the maximum is three. So let's, why don't we bring it up to three? Three volts peak to peak, and it's it's right on there. The scope is reading at 3.01, so yeah, that that's good. So it, it's it's accurate in frequency, it's accurate in voltage. So okay, well let's see what the square wave looks like. Okay, that's the square wave at its maximum frequency, which is 50 kilohertz. Okay, so our rise time is about 850 nanoseconds. 
Okay, so this is the on-duty cycle. So it's saying 47%, this is saying 50. Now that could be because of the trapezoid shape of it. Let's bring down the frequency a little bit here. So the rise time is remaining about the same. We're getting more accurate on the duty cycle. Yeah, so down around here, we're, we're pretty well smack on the duty cycle. So let's go down and, and uh, we'll adjust the duty cycle a bit and see what happens there. 60%, 70%. Eighty percent. The score is reading seventy nine point seven. Ten percent. And yeah, the score is reading nine point seven. So it's, it's pretty accurate that way. So let's have a look at some of the other waveforms then. Sawtooth. And it looks a little, just a little bit lopsided. Half wave. Let's bring the trigger up to work with that. Full wave. Step wave. Reverse step. Exponential function. and DC. So direct current, we set at three volts. Is that what it's giving us? It is. Right on three volts. Well, yeah, the voltage is very accurate. These are useful waveforms. Not really that great for RF. It only goes up to 50 kilohertz. Would it be good for audio? I'd say in a limited respect because of the, the stair step in it. Uh, unless they do something to filter that out and fix their sine wave, it's not going to be great for audio. It has some nice features. It does have all these different waveforms. It does have a very accurate frequency. It does have a very accurate voltage. It does not have offset, so you can't produce a true AC signal. The duty cycle is very accurate when you're in square wave. Rise time is not the greatest. It's uh, around about a microsecond. Good for working with slower microcontrollers. It'd be perfect. I didn't think I would ever like this form factor, but now that I've had a chance to play around with it, it's not that bad at all. It'd be very handy for sticking into a tool bag or something like that, especially in, in the case that's supplied with it. It'd be a really nice portable instrument. I think also for somebody who's working with Arduinos and stuff like that, this would be a perfect little instrument. The scope is definitely good enough for that. It's got dual channels on it. It's good up to, really good up to about 40 megahertz. So for in the Arduino world where you're dealing with a maximum of 16 or 20 megahertz, it's this thing would be perfect. It's got a really nice multimeter as you saw today. It's, it's accurate, it's four and a half digits. Yeah, the automatic mode works, the auto ranging works very quickly, it has all the basic functions. It's very nice that it has these three functions in it together. For the average hobbyist coming into electronics, especially to work in the, in the, the maker space, this thing is a, is a fantastic tool. It'd be able to do everything they need all in one little instrument. And look at the price. I mean, if I could have got something like this for this kind of money back when I first started in electronics, I would have been bonkers crazy happy. My first real instrument was a 5 megahertz Heathkit oscilloscope. It was much more expensive than that, especially in today's dollars. It'd probably run around about $600 in today's dollars. And not nearly as good an oscilloscope as this. It had a single trace, no storage capability, no measurement capability or anything like that. It was all done manually. For a hobbyist just getting into the game, this thing gives you everything you need. All right, folks, thanks for coming out. And uh, we'll catch you in the next video. I think the next video is going to be about our power supply design. So be sure not to miss that. I've gotten the boards in from PCBWay. So we should be able to get onto that in a, in a day or two, hopefully. Uh, I thought I'd be back with this a little bit sooner, but the holidays, you know. Anyway, folks, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.